There is one thing these machines have in common. Of course, they can make what we design in a computer. But in order to do so, they use precise positioning actuators to build the geometry needed in the machining process. Those actuators could be stepper motors. There also exist servo motors, and yes, they can also do the job. But today I wanted to share with you some tips and tricks to quickly understand how steppers work and how to program microcontroller sketches in order to make them move. So, let's get started. I will start explaining from the very basics and will not introduce you to complex technical information. The process of controlling a stepper motor is quite simple. Think about a system built of black boxes. Inside each black box will be some kind of values needed to operate properly and components to also communicate with other boxes in the system. The first box will have inside a controller which can operate with logic voltage levels of 5 volts. It has input and output ports to send or receive data to other boxes. Each board can handle a maximum current of 40 mA and cannot feed directly any power electronic component like your stepper motor. That's where we came up with the next black box, which is a power amplifier, aka stepper motor driver. The stepper motor driver receives 5 volt data from our controller in a form of a pulse train, and every rising edge or falling edge, depending on the logic we are using, it will make move our stepper motor a certain amount of degrees commonly 1.8 degrees per step, which means you will need to send 200 pulses to make a full rotation of the shaft. The stepper motor driver will also increase the voltage and current needed to feed our motor. Finally, the stepper motor will receive sequences of high voltage pulses applied to its coils. It will drive whatever physical process we need to automate and it can also hold its position by using its whole torque. This will make the shaft resist to any external event that tries to move it away from its desired position. With that being said, you already know how steppers work. Let's hook up some wires and start to program our machines. You can follow the schematic shown in the picture, but there are two tricky things here. One is that you must not connect Arduino ground with power source ground because the driver is optically isolated for the purpose of protecting the microcontroller from high voltage sparks. Thing number two is that commonly a stepper consists of two coils, so before you connect the stepper to the driver, you must identify them. We do so by using the speaker in our multimeters. For the controller stage I will be using Arduino Uno board and the Arduino IDE to build the firmware. This first program will make our motor turn 360 degrees clockwise, wait a sec, and then go the other way around. Instead of using the pin mode function and digital write functions, I highly recommend to start using port manipulation. This will optimize incredibly your firmware. In the setup, I set pins 8, 9, and 10 as outputs in the DTRB register by placing number 1 on them, like so. Now let me explain these four lines of code. As you know, I am using three bits to control my stepper. Bit zero will be the pulse train, which sends steps to the driver. We set it high, delay t seconds, and then set it low, delaying other t seconds. So that we make one pulse and the motor turns 1.8 degrees. Bit number two will set the direction of rotation. It will be 1 for clockwise and 0 for counterclockwise. Bit number 3, it's the enable pin. If we set it low, it will be available to move or hold its position. If we set it high, it will ignore any step pulse. Commonly you need to set it high when the motor is out of service. Then we need to add a for loop to control how many steps we send to our motor. Remember, a full rotation will be 200 steps and the resolution of the motor is 1.8 degrees per step. So, 200 steps multiplied by 1.8 degrees equals 360 degrees. And because we want to make a rotation clockwise, wait a second, and make other rotation counterclockwise, we must add the same block of code, but bit number 2 will be 0 or low this time 
and we must add a delay function between them of obviously one second. Now upload the sketch to your Arduino and you are done. Another thing to mention is that you can use microstepping to reduce mechanical noise of your motor. You can select them from this chart as well as the currents that your motor can handle by using the combination in the dip switch. I will go now with 6400 pulses per rotation with a big current of 2 amps. As you can guess there will be no longer 200 pulses per rotation so you must change that in your Arduino sketch. Now let's say we need an accurate control of the stepper RPM. As you can imagine, the time we spend between each pulse defines that speed. But how can we match that time to a specific RPM? Well, it is not about the time, it's about frequency. Or maybe both. Who knows? The idea is to calculate the frequency of pulses sent at every 60 seconds. And here I got the recipe, so don't break your brain. The frequency will be equal to the RPM needed divided by the ratio between the resolution of the step and 360 degrees. Multiply that by 60 seconds. We can get the resolution of the steps by making 360 degrees divided by steps per revolution. I make a more complex sketch to set the desired RPM through the serial monitor. And of course, you will have this sketch in the video description. So let's make a test to prove that our math is correct. I will set 17 RPM and count the time with my phone, but I will speed up the video so you don't get bored. The last thing is that as well as the driver can handle a maximum voltage and current, it also has a maximum input pulse frequency. Thus, we can achieve no more than 500 RPM in this specific system. So all of these topics cover some basic theory and practice to build up a project that includes a stepper. I hope you enjoyed the video, and for more videos like this one, don't forget to make your notification bell rings, give it a thumbs up, comment about, share with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. And the most important, try not to burn your circuits. See you guys!